Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande. I am your host. And if you've watched gay porn in the past 12 years, I've definitely helped you get off. Today, I have such a special guest. I know I say that. I say this every single week, but every one of my guests is special. But I absolutely love... Um, I love your Twitter page. I love everything that I've seen so far. Uh, and when I met you yesterday to talk about it, um, it was one of those situations where I was like, I need to have her on. Like, I, I need to talk to this lady. So my guest today is um, a fan of M&M fiction, a uh, fan of gay porn, and also um, a lady, <laughs> which is always very, yes. very interesting. So um, please, everybody, uh, welcome Betsy. Betsy, thank you so much for sitting down and doing this with me. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I, I'm curious. I want to know. You are you are at the Gay VN Awards in Las Vegas right now. This was your plan to come to Vegas for the Gay VNs. That's the only reason why I came. <laughs> okay. So, um. How did it all start? Well, actually, it started last year. One of the guys that I follow, he really wanted um, me and two of my friends to come because he wanted to talk to us. Okay. Being women who watch gay porn and, and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we had so much fun that we came back this year and extended our trip to even longer. Yeah, you're here longer than I am. <laughs> I think that's amazing. So now, when, when you first saw uh, gay porn, when was that? It was the summer of 2017. Really? Mm -hmm. So this is just, this is recent. Yeah, okay. very recent. Yes. Okay. So three years ago, you watched gay porn. Uh, anything in particular that you watched? Any any group or any company or studio? I started at Cocky Boys with okay. Liam Riley. Okay. I call him my first gay porn crush. Okay. <laughs> and I actually found out about him actually through a book group that I was on in Facebook and someone posted a picture of him and mm -hmm. I thought he was cute. And they said he was with cocky boys and I was intrigued. Mm -hmm. So I went online, watched some trailers, pulled out my credit card <laughs> <laughs> and I had my very first subscription to a gay porn site. <laughs> now, when you did that, did anything go through your mind? Was it anything like, wow, like what did you think? What was it when you first saw this guy and you knew, did you know he was a gay porn star? I did. Okay. So you knew going on Cocky Boys what you were going to get into? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so when you did, um, one thing that you mentioned to me yesterday that I thought was very interesting and I never put into my head was, um, well, men watch um, girls having sex with girls yep. in porn. All the time. So, yeah. So, so was that like your frame of mind when you were going into it or when you saw it? Like the, the first time you saw these two guys, what did you think? Well... Since I've been reading Eminem Erotica for so long, mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I figured it wouldn't be shocking. Mm -hmm. It it is different okay. from reading the written word, you know, and the way they describe it, mm -hmm. to physically seeing it. I think that was a little shocking mm -hmm. to actually, you know, it's see graphic. them do very graphic. <laughs> it's different, totally different from reading it to yeah. actually seeing mm -hmm. where all everything goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> where they put everything and Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So now um where after that, after Cocky Boys, what what happened? Well, I I um there was a scene um well first I devoured all of Liam Riley's catalog there cuz by then he was pretty much out of porn and doing his okay. his drag stuff. And then I devoured Ricky Roman's catalog. And then there was a particular scene there. It was a three-way, actually. Um, and I'm very picky. Usually three-ways don't work for me. Mm. Um, but there was Logan Moore and Josh Moore and Ricky Roman did a three-way. But I kind of ignored the other two and I zeroed in on Josh Moore. Because mm -hmm. there was just something about him in his eyes. Or I disconnected with him. Mm -hmm. I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole. And three years later, I'm still there. But then I started following him and he became an exclusive for cocky boys for a year mm -hmm. and then uh he's now exclusive with falcon and i just followed him to falcon okay and then i you know i see other things you know and that gives me a wider net to, mm -hmm. of guys to look at well now like yeah that. i mean coming to an award show like this you're surrounded by these guys so do you think uh, do you like when you are like when you come right um i assume they love you first of all right they say they, they, they do, do. <laughs> they you know you don't you give off such a great, like, compassionate oh, vibe. So that's that's another reason why I wanted to have you on, too. Um, but when you see all these guys, do you think, oh, wow, like, who's that? Am I going to follow him now, too? Or how, how, does, that, how does that grow? Well, 
How does your porn library grow? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it kind of grows from what I see. Um, and I, if, if, you know, I find the guy pleasing, mm-hmm. even on Twitter, I just followed a couple of new guys because mm-hmm. they show up on my timeline and I, and I check out their profile and I go, Oh, he sounds interesting. Okay. I'll follow him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's pretty much what I do. Or, and there was another time where Casey Everett did a scene for cocky boys. And I know that and then I followed him over to, uh, Dom, to his partner site, DominicPacifico.com. Okay. And, th- and that stuff is totally different than what Cocky Boys does. Mm-hmm. And I saw one scene they did, and sometimes I live tweet while I watch my porn. <laughs> I can't That's help it. That's pretty good, yeah. I get, I, get a, I, you know, I get a little excited and I find something hot. Yeah. I kind of want everyone else to see yeah. this. <laughs> but I, there was this one, they were like priests and it was in a church, mm. you know. Um, I'm, I'm a very curious person, so if I don't like it, I can always hit stop. Mm-hmm. But I remember watching it. And my eyes just got really big. And I'm like, and I started tweeting, tweeting. I said, I know I'm going to hell for this <laughs> because I like it so much. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so yeah. that, and then I followed Dominic to kink.com where I found out I'm not quite as vanilla as I thought I was. Mm. Um, so interesting. And I, and I usually do a roving subscription to different sites because I follow some of my other favorites who aren't exclusive. Okay. And so I just, follow them from studio to studio it's, every three months okay so tell me about kink.com now that you touched on it yeah i am um, some of my reading i've 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 been reading within the bdsm community mm-hmm. on that on that stuff and you know age gap daddy boy um you know whipping fog <laughs> it's not something that i necessarily do yeah. um but i found out i sure like watching it yeah it kind of turns. So you're crank. a voyeur almost, right? So I am. I am. Saw... I'm a very visual person too. Okay. So, yeah, me too. and I think that helps. I mean, I've seen stuff on was it Bound Gods and Men of Edging where they just oh, do geez, the edging. You just you know all these sites. I love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very. I, I find them. I'm very eclectic in my yeah. porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. I I find what I like, and I'm always willing to give something a try. I mean, so before we get into Kink.com, um, what? How do you feel watching straight porn? I hate straight porn. Why? Because I find it unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not geared toward women at all. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, they never really show much of the guy. It's all focused on the woman. Mm-hmm. And I, I, find, I just find it very fake. And I, you know, I never really feel a connection between the two people. And I find that important. Now, you don't always even find that mm-hmm. in gay porn. You don't always find a connection or chemistry. And, you know, and you can kind of feel they're just acting. Mm-hmm. But when you can find two of them that have the chemistry and it's natural and organic, it's the sexiest thing That's, ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, not a fan of straight porn. No, uh, and I've watched a lot of straight porn. Yeah. I, it's funny because so. I, um, I watch a good amount of straight porn too. Um, so there are probably a lot of studios that, um, you know, that I don't know <laughs> I don't think in the gay, in the gay porn industry, yeah. at least in the gay porn side. Um, but now kink.com, right? So when you, when you came across kink.com, what was your first impression? Well, it was, a, um, I was a little leery at first. So I just said, okay, I'm just going on with my eyes open and, I was watching it was, and actually it was a Dominic Pacifico Casey Everett scene is what it was. And it was mm-hmm. Casey's first time there. And I think being with them as a couple, it helped because they, ha- they have chemistry mm-hmm. together. But as I was watching it, I'm starting thinking, hmm, this is pretty interesting. I'm surprised I like, I was really surprised I liked it. So, what, what was the scene? What did it entail? Um, <laughs> I had uh, Casey tied up, suspended. From the okay. roof and, um, oh God, it was, it was about a year ago that I saw it. Um, and I can't remember exactly what he did, but I bought the scene. Mm. So it's on my computer now. Mm-hmm. So I can watch it whenever I want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it, it just had a lot of different things. Oh, he had him tied to a post with his arms up and the ropes around his waist. And his, so he couldn't move. Mm-hmm. So he, he couldn't get away from Dominic no matter how he tried. I think there was some spanking involved mm-hmm. and, all different sorts of things. All that fun things. stuff. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he's they've even done stuff with that electric oh, play with but, the electric um, rod. Yeah, and the stuff. cattle prod? 
Yeah. Like, <laughs> or even something like they had. They like had these nipple things clamps like, and stuff. Do they do they, that? Yeah, yeah. There was some. Of the, they even do clothespins. Yeah. Okay. And they'll like rip them all off at yeah. the same time, and that just makes me go, "Yeah, no, no. <laughs> not for you." But you can watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a thing. I do. I feel yeah. like a voyeur, mm-hmm. almost like a peeping tom, and I'm and I'm kind of like looking through the hole in the mm-hmm. wall. At <laughs> yeah, yeah something private, but I don't know. <laughs> so now. um Tell me a little bit about Betsy, uh, Betsy growing up. Did you see, like, was there anything growing up that you kind of were like, wow, I might be into gay porn? <laughs> well, this is really funny because I was probably, I don't know, my twenties, early thirties, mm-hmm. and I watched Buffy and Angel, mm-hmm. the show, and then they had the, there these, the, the two vampire characters were Angel and Spike, mm-hmm. two totally different types of characters. Um, and there were a lot of girls in this community we were in. They'd write fan fiction, mm-hmm. and they were shipping Angel and Spike. Of course, it was on regular TV, so, of course, that never happened. And then a friend of mine and I started writing our own and putting it out on the Internet. And um, and I found, and in one group, I there was there was a guy there, and I used to ask him, because I don't know. I didn't know a lot of stuff about guys or, mm-hmm. or, or gay guys or things that they use. So he was my sounding board and I would ask him questions on how does this work and how does this work? And mm-hmm. cause mm-hmm. I don't have the same appendages either as a guy. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know what it feels like when someone gives you a hand job yeah. or something <laughs> like that. So, you know, wow, very in depth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I, you know, I didn't, we, we, we wanted to be as, true as possible mm-hmm. this and we would write them in the past and we would write them in current time and mm-hmm. i did that for a couple of years actually so this is so like nothing this is triggered recently this is nothing that came from like something back when or i remember you, one of the things we talked about was also in your 20s you mentioned um growing up with people uh, gay people. You had gay mm-hmm. people in your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, were, I had, I had two good friends when I lived in California in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they weren't out there. I mean, you couldn't be back then. Yeah. It was never forgotten. They're Louis and Cecil, mm-hmm. and they lived around the corner from me. And they were great guys. I don't know what ever happened because I, we left. My dad was in the navy, so we left after five years, and we didn't keep in touch. Mm-hmm. But they were my first introduction to gay guys. Mm-hmm. And what, um, one of the things we touched on yesterday too, and I don't want to keep harping on or rehashing or bringing it back, but it's, it's, I think it's very interesting that, um, you enjoy the fact that like you walk down the street and you see a gay couple holding hands. I love it. I live in, luckily I live in the Seattle area, which is Mm -hmm. very progressive and they have a great community up on Capitol Hill, but even just downtown in the business district, you'll see guys walking downtown holding hands Mm -hmm. and maybe on the street corner giving each other. I mean, they're not making out, but they do what straight people do. And I just kind of stop and look at them and go, Oh, that is so adorable. (laughs) I mean, I just think it's great that they feel comfortable enough Mm -hmm. to do that even now. I mean, you know, not everybody's accepting of it, but mm. um, but in Seattle, it's, I, I've never heard of there being any problems like you hear in some other areas. So mm-hmm. I just think it's great that they can be more open because I think they should be. I mean, no one bats an eye when a guy kisses his girlfriend on the street corner or mm-hmm. holds her hand or, you know, mm-hmm. puts a hand in her back pocket of her jeans. I mean, but all of a sudden, you know, two guys or two girls can't do mm-hmm. it. I mm-hmm. mean, that's not right. Yeah. What um what's next for you? What's what's coming up in uh in the near future in regards to uh anything porn related? I'll just I'll just keep following my guys and yeah. supporting them the best way I can. Is there um, is there one guy in particular that you found and said, "Okay, I'm going to f- definitely follow this guy from this trip." Oh, for, from 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 this yeah. trip alone? Oh my gosh. Um God, I met so many that I don't know. Mm. I mean, I have, a, I followed a lot of new people. I'd have to go over my list, yeah, yeah. but um, probably Cutler X is the, is yeah. the one I met him for the first time. Huh? <laughs> Chave uh-huh. just heard you say Cutler. Oh. X. <laughs> well, you know, cause we, we know Cutler. He's great. He's oh yeah. I met guy. him. Um, I met him Friday night at the, um, party up in vanity. Okay. 
And um and I followed him immediately. Yeah. I, and I've run into him a couple. He's he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's a very very yeah, nice. Yeah, and, and you know the guys have been very accepting. You know, mm-hmm. being I mean we're not their target audience, mm-hmm. and and we know we're not their target audience. You know, but uh, I find most of them are very accepting mm-hmm. of the female fans. What um have you had any kind of ambivalence? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, I, not personally so much, but I've seen guys. You know, some guys post. You know, about you know females. They shouldn't be at like even like at events like this mm-hmm. at the Gay Vienna Awards, or you know, they shouldn't go to gay clubs. Gay clubs, and I know they need their own space. Mm-hmm. You know, which they feel free to be who they are Mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I mean, there have even been guys, I don't know if there's so much models, but they, they would like, I'd get a follow. And every time I get a follow, I go look at their Mm -hmm. profile page to see if I want to follow them back. And the first thing I see in their, that little biography Mm -hmm. thing, they say no females. Okay. Then why are you following a female? And I just block, Mm -hmm. I just block them. I mean, I think the community is big enough for everybody. Yeah. I think so too. I've I've always had um uh it, it's it's almost a double edged sword. I understand uh that gay people sometimes might not want women in certain mm-hmm. places, but there was a time that people didn't want gay people in certain places. Right. So I kind of feel like you have to open or you have to if you want something, you have to be able to give it to everybody right. as well. Um you know, that that being said, I've been to Provincetown and places where um you know there are women having bridal parties or bridal showers. Yes. But they, they oversaturate it to the point where, you know, they all, they basically, after speaking to one of them, well, we love coming here. The gays are so nice to us and we can just relax and no one's bothering us, but they're kind of bothering the gays. Exactly. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. It is a double sword. Yeah. sword. And I know me and um, some of my friends, we used to go, there's a couple of gay clubs in, in Seattle and cause we had a very good friend mm-hmm. and we would, we would go out with them to help find him a boyfriend is what, is what we were doing. But what we found is that it's, it's kind of nice to go to a bar if you want to dance and mm-hmm. have drinks and not have to worry about guys hitting on you mm-hmm. or, I mean, cause I've dealt with that in my twenties and thirties, unwelcome advances. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so, so it's kind of nice to go to a place that you can go out, have fun, you know, and there's no line for yeah. the women's room. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's always good too. You'll find some guys in there though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've at a concert or two, I've, I've, I've used the men's room because yeah. there were shorter lines, yeah. but I do. And, and I respect their need for their own space. And I mm. don't have a, I have a problem with that. I mm-hmm. mean, so. So now, um, we talked about, uh, you're going to follow your guys. Um, you live in, you mentioned you're from Seattle. Yeah. Live so outside of Seattle. When you, when you go back to Seattle, um, are your parents there? Yes, they are. Okay. How do they feel about your, or do they know? Do they, know <laughs> they do. I <laughs> accidentally let it slip. I was on a trip with them and my aunt, yeah. we were sitting around the table drinking one night, yeah. <laughs> which is, I tend to get very verbal <laughs> and I just have happened to let it slip that mm. I do gay porn. I watch it. Now my mom knew I wrote those M and M stories mm-hmm. way back in the, the fan fiction. Mm-hmm. And she always said, why don't you see about getting it? See if you can get it published, which surprised me in and of itself. But actually viewing porn, she has a problem with it. She calls after she finds out about three months later, she calls me and she goes, you know, I've been doing some research on porn. <laughs> you know, she goes, you know, it's addictive. And granted, some people can become addictive to it. I'll go months without watching. And, mm-hmm. and you know, like on Wednesday, I watched like three or four scenes and I tweeted that I got stuck in a tornado. So, you know, my Wednesday tornado. <laughs> um, and then she goes, you know, and it's, um, well, not only is it addicting, but it causes depression. And I go, well, I don't understand how that it could cause it. I mean, you got two hot guys having sex. They orgasm. That releases endorphins. Mm-hmm. Endorphins make you happy, mm-hmm. and you're all nice and relaxed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she she doesn't approve of no. it. I don't even think she'd approve if I was watching straight porn either. So yeah, okay, so it's it's porn all around. It's, I think it's porn all around, but I think she's even more disturbed that it is gay porn. Yeah, but oh. you know what? I'm an adult. Yeah, you can do what you want. I use my own money. So um, are you going? Are you going to the GVNs tonight? I am going to the GVNs tonight. Okay. What do you, is there anything you're looking forward to tonight? Anybody you want to win? Anybody that, uh. Oh, of course. There's always my favorites I want to win. Yeah. You know, got Michael Roman, who's nominated for several categories. Mm-hmm. Would love to see him win. I'd mm-hmm. uh, love to see Josh Moore win. 
um, any of the guys that I follow. Mm -hmm. well, I, and I, I look at this way, whether they win or lose, I know it sounds cliche, but at least, I mean, they were nominated, mm -hmm. so they're recognized yeah. for the work that they yeah, did. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's something. Yeah. You and know. you get to come here, and it's a lot of fun, and I, I, I agree with you. When uh, yeah, I, I came with two girlfriends, mm -hmm. and we've been having a blast, and yeah. I get to, you know, I call them my guys. Yeah. I get to see my guys. Though at work, my, my coworkers asked me why, what I was going to um, Vegas for. I said, oh, I'm just meeting up with some girlfriends and guy friends. More guy friends and girlfriends, but... Yeah. Did they, they were, do you know there's a gay or a, <laughs> yeah, no. a porn industry thing well, going on? <laughs> I haven't been at my job long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, now none of my friends know about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's just my little thing that yeah. I do that I find enjoyment from. So why not? Okay. You're all dolled up. I'm not hurting anybody, so <laughs> why not? You are dolled up. You're ready to go. Yep. Um, I'm not going to take more of your time. I just have to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I appreciate oh. your your enthusiasm, your support for the for the porn community, for porn models. I know that you're very um, uh, protective of them as well. I am. And that's very appreciated. I am. And when I see people going to attack them, I, I, I'll jump into the fray to have their back. Mm -hmm. Which is cool. Because yeah. some people can be awful. Yeah. Awful, yeah. awful. So yeah, thank you. I do for my that. part. You're like a, a mama bear. That's a, sometimes least, yeah. I feel that way. I mean, because yeah. some of them are, most of them are young enough to be my kids, and I don't look <laughs> at them that way. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, thank you, thank you so much, um, Betsy. I appreciate it. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord. And if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>